Hello, my fellow gamers. As promised, here is a review of Unit 2 of AP Enviro, aka Biodiversity. I'm not going over everything, because I don't care enough. Listen, I said I was going to do this, and I always keep my word. So here we go. Now, we're going to go right into Unit 2 Biodiversity. And of course, the first thing we're going to go over is ecological diversity, which, as you all remember, is the difference between different biomes. Now, many of you probably know the word biome from Minecraft, and that is where it originated from. However, it was also used to describe differences between different environments, different ecosystems. For example, over here is a jungle biome. And as you can see, the wildlife is much different than the ecosystem over here, which is more of a pig forest or a Lord of the Flies island. Anyway. Oh, I should have mentioned, there are three types of biodiversity. We're going to go through all of them. That was number one, ecological diversity. And they get smaller and smaller as you go down the chain. So next up is species diversity. And for that, we're going to go to one of the most diverse ecosystems on the planet, which is, as you all know, the coral reef. Now, coral reefs are extremely diverse and very important, but they're also being killed by global warming. So, in general, we should probably not do that. However, since this one is in Minecraft and not dead, we can use it to demonstrate species diversity, which is the amount of different species in an ecosystem. So as you can see, in every coral reef there are underwater zombies, squids, pink and blue fish, kelp, sea pickles, coral. Coral is alive, but most of it isn't. It's just little polyps on the surface that are alive. Here's another fish. It looks black and flat, like that one from Spongebob. Here's a dolphin. And as you can see, a very, very high level of species diversity because coral reefs provide a place with lots of nutrients, lots of places to hide, and lots of little niches to be filled. And so, lots of species diversity. Pickles, coral, squids, dolphins somewhere over there zombies. Now, for our final level of diversity, we are going to talk about genetic diversity, which is diversity within a certain species. So I have this little demonstration area set up here. So as we can see, the majority of a species, probably a dominant allele, is white sheep. And if we get some of our wheat here, we can see that if you breed two white sheep together, come on, get, get out of the way. We need to see the breeding. Where, where, there it is, it creates another white sheep. However, if we breed a black sheep and a white sheep together, come on, it produces a gray sheep. So. I don't remember the exact term for that, Miss Brecht can help me out there in the comments section below, but sometimes genes like overlap, like those weird roses that we always look at as an example of that. Anyways though, one thing that can happen with biodiversity, or species biodiversity, is something called the bottleneck effect. And that happens because of different adaptations. So as you can see here, one of the adaptations is fur color. Or coat color? I don't know. But it essentially means different coats help them blend in. Like maybe black coats stay warmer in the winter because black absorbs more. But white coat sheep stay cooler 
get out of here. Anyway. However, redcoats have a special ability that is being immune to volcanoes. So, as you can see, if a volcano were to erupt in this tiny sheep island, it would be very bad for most of the creatures. However, this is, as I said, an example of the bottleneck effect. Or, there's another name for it, which I am googling right now, the founder effect. Which essentially means, say, a disaster wipes out every member of a species except the one small subsection of the species that have an adaptation that allows them to survive the disaster. This means that all, even though it's not a common allele or mutation, every single or pretty much every new sheep will have this ability. I'll just let all these people survive the uh, volcano real quick. And I should mention, this is called a physiological mutation because, or physiological adaptation rather. There are also behavioral and structural adaptations, but I have no idea how to demonstrate them in Minecraft. And as you can see, if these sheep, these uncommon red sheep, have more children, boom, those sheep are also red, even though white, as we saw, was the dominant gene. And anyway, that's about it for my demonstration on biodiversity. Like and subscribe. Don't do that. This is my private YouTube channel. Anyways, thank you for watching, and... Good luck on Unit 2 of AP Environmental Science. Thank you all for watching.